If you are serious about winning and you want the most competitive edge, then no, you should not limit your frame rate in CSGO. And this has nothing to do with your monitor being 60 or 240 hertz. But if you just want smoother gameplay, then yes. This answer might come as a surprise for a few of you, so I'll do my best to explain it in this video. Scope.gg, my sponsor, is a specialized analytics platform. It is free to use, sign in through Steam or with Faceit, and Scope will auto-upload your CSGO demos to start analyzing them. Scope just released their latest feature for finding teammates. It uses an individual algorithm that analyzes your skills, goals, playstyles, and interests. Then, based on this data, it recommends other people who match your answers. It is so advanced that suggested teammates might also be compatible enough to become your friends. And yes, Scope does not include toxic people. Once you're done answering questions, you can start adding people you find interesting and play together with them. Check out this feature in the video link down below. With some games and certain engines, leaving the frame rate uncapped breaks the game. It sometimes even breaks hardware. But is this the case for CSGO? With CSGO, you have FPS max set to 400 by default. No, not 300, Kevin. That was years ago. Still, 300, 400, they're both very high numbers. The game is optimized for a high in-game frame rate. In fact, the higher the frames, the lower the input lag. This is not always the case for other games, but for CSGO, yes. According to Hardware Unboxed, they noticed capping your frame rate increased input lag. So, for the lowest input lag, which pretty much means getting faster feedback from the mouse and keyboard to the game, you simply do not want to rely on limiting your frame rate. Now we're going to go back to school to learn about frame times. A frame time is how long a frame or image appears on your screen. This is measured in milliseconds. If you have 60 FPS, which is 60 frames per second, then you're getting one frame per 16.67 milliseconds. At 120 FPS, that's one frame per 8.33 milliseconds, and 240 FPS FPS, that's one frame per 4.17. After 240 FPS, we start seeing less gaps in milliseconds when taking these even higher amounts into consideration, which are already very high. So if, for example, you're jumping between 400 FPS down to 240 FPS, we're talking about less than two milliseconds of fluctuation. That's nothing compared to something like 120 FPS down to 60. Of course, we cannot compute milliseconds when we play, but you can definitely feel it much more. If we simply look at only the higher frame rates in this scenario, it is actually a bit misleading. While the difference in just frame rates sounds like a very big deal, the frame times, not so much. It's worth pausing the video to really take this in. By limiting your frame rate to combat large fluctuations, you're also removing the possibility of getting the most up-to-date image. There's this other argument as well that you should cap because that will improve your FPS. That's just not true from my testings. Even if the game is uncapped versus being capped at 300 FPS with Riva Tuner, the 1% low is practically unchanged. Now, I know you see a slight increase here, but keep in mind this slight variation is very normal due to the sample size that I have, and the results are just not going to match exactly. Besides, the average FPS is now capped, so once again, you're forcing a less up-to-date image, and let's not forget, increased input lag. Can I also just say, wow? From this perspective alone, capping it at 144 FPS, the game actually looks quite stable. Meaning you can stop talking about CSGO being a piece of trash not optimized game when compared to other games. Granted, it's still capped at 144 and we want higher frames for a competitive advantage. Finally, the last argument, having consistent frame rate is more important than having high frame rates. At this point, if you've followed me through the video, I don't even see why I should cover this. But to summarize, you'll trade competitive advantage for personal preference. Say you still want to cap slash limit your frame rate. My suggestion is to put it below your 1% low. This would compensate for some of your slowest frames, which are mostly felt as dips. And frame times will most likely stay consistent from the moment you start up CSGO to the moment you rage quit. I'm actually guilty of capping my frame rate using RTSS for the exact reason of keeping my frame times stable. For that alone, it is pretty solid as you can see here. But if it's only to make your numbers look prettier, just remember it still comes with a competitive disadvantage. So here's my conclusion. The best argument for limiting your frame rate is if the game starts behaving strange. As far as I know, that doesn't seem to be the case for CSGO, even at very high frame rates. So if you want to muster the highest competitive edge, let your FPS be free. And if you have a PC strong enough to go over 400, increase your FPS max to a higher amount. Thanks for watching, guys. 
Please like the video if you enjoyed it and you want to support my content. Stay awesome and go bananas.